right now. So please, I really would love that you get in touch with anybody because virtually almost everybody has has been suffering and laboring under this thing called masturbation. To be honest, it's very difficult to come by any person who hasn't had a brush with masturbation or, or who isn't laboring under the weight of masturbation. People are suffering from this thing. And maybe, and what I always tell people is that the easiest way out of masturbation is knowing the truth about what masturbation really is. And when you know what it is, I'm telling you, it becomes a lot easier for you to get out of it. Because the Bible says that it's only together with us that the good things which the Lord has prepared for us shall be made manifest. So when you know what masturbation is, you suddenly begin to partner with God to pull yourself out of that wickedness. Uh, it's, it's an incredible wickedness and I'm going to reveal that to you today. So um, let's get started right away. And I, by the way, I'm very sorry for the 15 minute delay. I love to always be on time, but I'm very sorry because there were a few, you know, little things that came up. They thank God we're on finally. So basically, um, almost everybody watching me right now knows what masturbation is. You know, masturbation, you have to fiddle yourself. You go to your genitalia or your male or female organ, your reproductive organ, and you go and you, you start fiddling with yourself and start stimulating yourself to make yourself to arouse yourself. That's basically what masturbation is all about. And people deal with, this is one of the most secretive sins that people commit on earth today. One of the most secretive. But the problem is that a lot of people do not know what happens during masturbation. First of all, I was having a, a, a program online one day and I told you people, that I suffered under the weight of masturbation for close to two decades in my life. I labored, as soon as I became a teenager and became conscious of being a teenager, I started masturbating. And it went on for a very long time. And I told you people the story of how that I cried unto God one day and I was like, I am born again. Why do I have to keep doing this thing? And, and it's not like I would say God told me, but I know that I heard something that told me, look, you have to get to the grave. You have to get to the hell, the pits of this thing so you can take up the keys and set people free. It's like Jesus dying and going, you know, Jesus came to conquer death, but death had to eat him first before he can now conquer the death because he had to go into the grave and pick up the keys and give it to us and then we have power over death. It's more like what God was trying to do with me. And I think if, that, if, I was, if what I thought was true, then that is what is happening here today because I'm going to give you the keys. And the keys you need to know today is the truth of what masturbation really is so that tomorrow nobody will confuse you. And we're going to go to the scriptures, all right? We're going to go to the Bible. If you have your Bibles, please, it starts from the scriptures. Because if we don't have a biblical root, you may not understand the whole thing. I want to show you what the devil is harvesting when you masturbate and when you engage in sexual immorality. But now we're dealing with masturbation today. So I want to tell you what devil is taking. Because when you masturbate, there's an energy that you give out. So where, what is that energy? Where does it go? Who, who is taking it? And why are they taking it? So what was the origin of that thing that the devil wants to take away from you? So I want you to go to the book of Genesis chapter. And please read King James Bible. If you have a King James Bible, I want you to turn to your King James Bible. Please, I always tell people. Maybe I'm going to do this uh, 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 satanic Bibles again so that you guys will know why we always uh, recommend King James Bible. So pick up your King James Bible. And go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. I'm going to break a code starting from this scripture. And I'm going to reveal something to you that you probably have never heard anybody explain to you before. Okay. And it is uh, the story of how God created he. Create, I've done this before, right? One of the Saturdays in, uh, when we're doing our ghost warfare on um, 2017 last year. I, I actually treated this, this. So a lot of our August warriors here will know, will remember that I treated this. But I'm going to do it again because we have too many followers now. And because of this topic, if we don't treat it, people may not understand. Okay? So I'm going to go back in there again. And it's Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. 
in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Let us make man in our own image. Very simple. Everybody quotes the scripture, right? And then what happened in verse 27? The Bible says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That's where the confusion starts from. You and I know that very soon down the line, we are going to see where the Bible said that God breathed into the man. But here he's telling us he created male and female. So what's going on? <laughs> Please pay attention. Even if you're a pastor, this knowledge here today is going to help you to crack a code that you've never been able to crack before. So pay attention. Okay, it took God a lot to reveal this. So you need to pay attention. Please do not let anybody distract you. So male God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. First of all, I want you to take note of the of the Hebrew word here that is used for create. The word for, he, for create here is bara. Bara means to create something out of nothing. Bara means to create something out of nothing. So it would not be that God created the body of the man because the body was made out of something. So what happened here is that whatever God created here, if the word is bara, whatever was created was not created out of something. So it has to be the spirit of the man. So what God created here, and please take note of everything I'm saying because we're going to connect all of these things again. So what God did here is that he created the spirit of Adam and the spirit of Eve together. What did he do with the two spirits? Let's go straight down now. Okay, first of all, after creating, two of them were there. You, let me show you how God uses the words when he's speaking to them. So for you to know, he created the male and female, right? It is the two spirits he created. And then what happens in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28? He says, and God blessed them, plural. Okay? He blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply to two of them right and replenish the earth that's number one subdue the earth number two and have dominion so that means everything that happens on earth they are supposed to be in control and in charge of everything and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living thing everything that moveth on upon the earth even demons <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so that's what God did. He gave the command to two of them. And so let's go all the way down. Let's go straight down to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. What happened there? The Bible said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust, out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. I don't know if you are following what is happening. He created hmm, the two, gave them dominion, gave them power to become everything. These are spirits. There's nobody yet. And now suddenly he creates the man, which is the male man, right? And he breathed the breath of life into the man. Now, let me give you the secret that many of you do not know. The life in this very passage of the scripture, go check any reference you know. The life here is plural. It's plural by Hebrew translation. So what God did was he breathed the breath of lives into one male man. So what it meant was that Adam has a, has a male body, but both Adam's spirit and Eve's Eve spirit were living inside of Adam. I know somebody is saying, hmm, are, you, are, you, are you going to be able to prove this? Yes, I will prove it to you. In a very clear, unambiguous way. Alright? So follow me. He breathed the breath of lives. So it was the breath, it was the spirit of Adam and Eve that were residing inside of Adam. Adam, when God breathed the breath into Adam. 
how did I know? Follow me to Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 23. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 23. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep because it has already said in the previous chapter that it is not good for a man to be alone, right? Now, the Bible said, for the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. A deep sleep. Okay, let me finish reading. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I will take it one by one, please. Follow me. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. Do you know some of you who have knowledge on, on medicine and the rest of them? You know what is anesthesia? When you have an anesthetic uh, drug or something, that means it knocks the person off. The person literally is medically or clinically dead, more like. And then you can perform on any kind of operation, remove bones, remove anything they wouldn't even know. Adam was in an anesthetic state. This was the first case of anesthesia in all of humanity. So, and not only that, when God performed his operation and took away the rib, did you see what the Bible said here? It said, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. If Adam was knocked out and clinically dead, why do we have verse 23? After God had finished making the woman, he brought the woman to Adam. A person who was completely dead, more like when God took away the rib. God did not tell him, Adam, let's have a meeting. Do you need a woman or not? Should I make you a woman? Okay, let me make you my lie down. I'm going to make you to fall asleep. I will make you a woman. He didn't discuss anything with Adam. But how did Adam know that this is the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh? And if that was the only one, people would say, well, he was too excited. But what about the one he said, because she was taken of a man who told you Adam you want to know how Adam knew so let me tell you please pay attention right now because I'm about to dig, dig into something that is you that something you've never ever heard so somebody will ask a question why did God bond the spirit of Adam and Eve and melt two of them together. It's like yoking them together. You know egg yolk, when you put two eggs separately, I can tell you, give me the one with the pinkish shell or the one with the white shell or the one with the whatever shell. But when you put the yolk together, you can't separate it. What God did was that he took the yolks, the spirit, and molded the two of them together, blended them together, in a way that by every human standard, it, it is not possible to separate them again. The only way they can ever be separated is by divine act. And so God did that and bombed them inside the man. That's why Adam did not even feel like he needed somebody because he was already complete inside. But then God was up to something. Let me tell you what God was doing. God wanted to make sure because he knew that he had given man a free will that would make the man to forever not do anything unless he desires to. That's why he said, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Choose ye this day. If God wanted all of us to be robots, we won't be doing choose. You won't, be, you won't see anybody serving Satan today and some are serving, worshipping idol. Everybody must is by force. But because he knows that he created man to be a free will agent, he knew that if he did not do what he did, that after some time, that man will stop procreation. How? He molded the two spirits and then knew that as he has molded the two spirits, that pieces of this has gone into here, pieces of the woman has gone to the man, pieces of the man has gone into the man. So whenever he separates the two spirits, God will, by nature, naturally, it won't be mechanical anymore, it will, he will by nature leave a massive vacuum naturally created organically created in the spirit of the man and that vacuum is the vacuum that will make a man desire a woman and it will stay like that forever 
This is the origin of the desire of a woman in the heart and in the life of a man. You wonder why somebody will get of a certain age. He will start wishing to have a woman around. I need a woman, man. I'm lonely. Listen, if God did not do this, he, he made it to happen organically so that he stays for eternity. He molded the two spirits. He already knew because our God knows everything. He already knew he was going to make a woman for Adam. So but he said, look, if I just make a woman for him, Adam, in humanity will get to a point and we are there today. Can you imagine if God did not do what he did? Today you will have an entire generation that is just, all they do is just love their fellow men. And women will just love it. You will just see two generations on earth today. These people are all for men, men to men. This one are women to women. There won't be anybody who believes in heterosexual sex anymore or somebody who believes in normal, natural, organic family anymore. So that's what God did. He made them male and female. Carried the two spirits, buried. So when God was separating the spirit of Eve from Adam, Adam's spirit saw it. He knew it. He saw everything. He was crying and screaming for his wife to come back, for his other spirits have to come back. But unfortunately, he was already locked up in the box called the human body because he was already in an aesthetic state. So Adam could not react, but he saw and knew everything that happened by his spirit. That's why when the moment God brought the woman, Adam repeated to God what happened. God, this one was taken out of me, so she shall be. He, he did not take permission from God to name his wife. He just named Eve instantly. You're asking me, Joe, how do you know all these things? Okay, take your Bible to Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Let me finally break it down for you. Please open your Bible to Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. So I'll read. The Bible says, This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created, created he them. I want to read it again so that you see the words that are used here. Now, it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. Listen, follow it. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made, made, that is made out of something, right? Made he him, that made is Asa. Okay? He made he him, male and female created, bara him, created he them, and blessed them, and called, okay, that's the word you're waiting for. Can you see what is in verse 2? Is your Bible saying what my Bible is saying? Verse 2 says, Male and female created he them, created bara, and blessed them, and called their name. Plural, two people, their name, called it one, Adam. That's why when God yatsar Adam, because form to form in Hebrew is yatsar. When God formed the man, he breathed the breath of two lives into the man and called two of them one name. This is it here in, in chapter 5. He created the two, poured into one, and then called them Adam. Them. And he called their name, their, two of their names. He called it one. Why not say he called their names Adam? And he said he called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And he maintained the word created, which is what? Bara, out of nothing. So, here is the lesson. The man and the woman as a spirit were created. And it was in their spirit state that God gave them the commandment, the authority, the dominion, the power to take over everything. In other words, the power of a man and a woman that come together as one. It is stronger than all the demons in hell put together. Did you hear what I just said? The power of a man and a woman that come together as one is more powerful than all the demons in hell put together. This is where the dominion power came from. He said, you shall take dominion. That's why the Bible says one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. I want you to keep your eye and your ears and your memory on what I just explained now from Genesis so that we can go straight into the masturbation aspect. 
So, I'm going to ask you this. Why do you think God gave a woman the egg? You know, when a man and a woman meet for reproduction, the man releases the sperm and the woman releases the egg. So, God gave me sperm and gave the woman the egg. So, two of them have to come together and then they produce the result. Have you asked yourself, why is it that we can't just walk into the bathroom like the way we urinate and just urinate sperm? Or why is it that the woman cannot just go inside and sit on the WC and just drop her eggs just the way she drops urine? Have you asked yourself why? Do you know that even though God gave us those things, that God made it in such a way that before you can get the sperm out, before you can get the eggs out, you have to take, you have to embark on a spiritual journey to bring them out. <laughs> Please, bet. I told you that tonight is a very serious night. Before you get your sperm out, before you get your egg out as a woman, you must embark on a spiritual journey. And the height of that journey, the peak of that journey is what they call in the human language, is what you call orgasm. But then at orgasm, what happens? At orgasm. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'll explain to you today. So I'm gonna delve a little bit into my into my my thesis that I created that God gave me inspiration to create, and it's called the quadratic equation of sexual intercourse. So, here's what happens. When a man is indulging in a sexual activity, let me tell you what happens within that period, spiritually speaking. Within the period that you're about, say for instance, you are a born-again Christian and you want to indulge in a sexual activity, did you know that the Holy Spirit in you does not stay in you while you are having sex with your woman or with your man or with anybody? Did you know that the Holy Ghost is exempted from sexual activity between couples? I'm not sure you heard that before. Listen. So, you are born again, you are a child of God. And you want to indulge in a sexual activity. First of all, when you gave your life to Christ, what does the Bible tell us about you being born again? The Bible said that, For it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So, when, you, when somebody is born again, well, how, do we, how do we say that we are born again? What do you normally say? Which other way do you say you are born again? You say, I gave my life to Christ. What is your life? Your life is your spirit. Remember, God never mentioned Adam's body as Adam. He called them Adam when they were spirits. The two of them were It is your spirit that is who you are. The Bible says when he breathed the breath of life into Adam, Adam became a living soul. Meaning that the spirit is the one that gives life to the soul of man. You have a soul that your soul cannot function unless a spirit goes to wear it as a cloth and it takes life. So Adam was a dead soul or an ineffective, a, a non-functional soul until the spirit of God came or the, the spirit of Adam came into the soul. Adam became a living soul. So the life you give to Christ is not even the soul. It is your spirit which he created that, that you give back to God. But now this is what happens. When you give your spirit to God, your soul becomes empty. So what happens? He takes his own spirit and gives to come and guard your soul. That's why it is no longer you that live, but Christ that lives in you. So your, my life is hid in Christ Jesus. So wherever Christ is, that's where your life is hidden. It stays there with him. So for instance, now you're a couple. Whenever you want to make love, the Holy Ghost steps aside. Your spirit is released to come into you so you can have that sexual intercourse. And what happens in sexual intercourse is that 
You come to renew the covenant of oneness. Where did the origin of oneness come from? It came from what we just read in Genesis. There were one spirit, two that molded into one, became one. God separated. So it's a magnetic field that has been created. Every time you come to have sex, what happens is that instantly you people come to renew that covenant of oneness. So at the point of orgasm, the two spirits jam again the way they were when God put them inside Adam. And then so much power is released into that union instantly. And the power we are talking about, let me tell you, is where God em embedded his signature for dominion inside the power that is released when you do this act under a legal union. The power to dominate, the power to subdue is like a signature God put and he put it inside this very orgasmic point in your sexual intercourse. When the two spirits come together to join again. Like it was when they were inside of Adam. It has to continue to happen like that. To show that God left them one and they made them two. That's why you see, if you see in, 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 in marital calculations. One plus one is not equal to two. One plus one is equal to what? One. I have just given you the origin from Genesis. One single spirit and God separated. In sex, you join. That's what the Bible says. When you have, when you sleep with a prostitute, you know what you're doing? You are renewing the covenant of oneness with the prostitute. She holds you, you mold, and then it depends on whether she will release you or she will not release you. That spirit that she's carrying might decide to hold you and they take you to jail. So let me now bring you to that point. So when you sleep with somebody who has an evil spirit and you're a child of God, remember that the moment you want to go into a sexual activity, the Holy Ghost gives way. And then what happens? God releases your spirit, even though you're born again. He releases the spirit to you. Your spirit comes and now your spirit is going to indulge in a spiritual activity, which is sexual intercourse. And the person is a prostitute and she's carrying a demon, an ancestral spirit from her background. And that ancestral spirit is waiting to do what? To arrest your spirit, but you do not know. So the moment you do, you reach orgasm, your spirit ejects and goes to embrace his spirit to renew a covenant of oneness but he, her own spirit which is an evil spirit has refused to let your spirit come back into your body your soul that means you've been arrested immediately they forward you to the devil's camp where they chain all the souls all the all the spirits that they have arrested and because the devil is now the one that has taken in charge of your spirit He's the one that has won the right to replace your, your, your spirit in your body. So your soul that is empty, instead of being replaced by the spirit of God, is now being replaced by a spirit of the devil. A demon comes and wears up your soul. If you read Deliver from the Powers of Darkness, Ike Nathan Uzoma, he was talking, I used to say this all the time, he was talking about how that when they were in the occultic kingdom, they were moving from one level to another. Four, 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 three, three, three. This, this, that. So when you get into a particular level, what happens is that a demon possesses you. Any level you get to, a different demon with a different name will possess the person. And when the demon comes in, the name of that demon becomes your name. So the spirit that has gone into you, a girl you met from nowhere, you don't even know her background. You don't know there's some heavy demon operational in the family. As soon as you went into that, the thing has arrested you. A demon has been injected into you. I'm going to tell you why that demon is sent into you. So the demon was put into you. And you think you are still the same person. You don't know that you're no longer the same person. You're gone a long time ago. The girl has moved on. She doesn't even care. She's gone her way. So, after a short while, you start seeing some very strange manifestations in your body, in your life. Some sort of strange things, things that are not even known to anybody in your family. You just start doing some crazy things. You start manifesting all kinds of things that would just, you are dumbfounded at the way you behave. Because a new spirit has come into you. Before you know it, immediately a spirit wife is assigned to you. I'm going to tell you the mystery of spirit wife today. You see, when a person's spirit is ejected and arrested by the devil, and the devil puts a demon inside your life, immediately 
you have a spirit wife assigned to you instantly at that moment. That's why if you meet 10 men today, 8 to 9 have the issue of spirit wife. Strange demons that they contacted while they were meeting with different people. Now that you have this knowledge, let's narrow it down to masturbation. I want to explain to you something today. I want to explain to you so that you know what is happening. And you know, apart from your spirit being removed out of your body, when you are doing that sexual activity, why? Okay, now this is the question I have to answer for you before I move forward to the next level. The question somebody might be asking is, why is it that sex, God took sex and made it to be only for a marital union, a legally consummated union? Why did he keep it for that? Do you know why God keep, kept it for that? I just prove to you right now that the power to, dom, to take dominion and subdue and be in charge, that God took the signature of that power and embedded it in a proper legal sexual union. When you reach that, you see a man and a woman, they are loyal to each other in a marriage, a properly consummated marriage. That power is when you, the more you people have make love to each other, the more you renew the, the covenant of oneness, the more the power to take dominion is released. So that energy cannot be found anywhere in the world. And not only that, whenever you indulge in a sexual intercourse, I hope somebody is listening, please, these are very sensitive. You are releasing the life essence, what we call the life essence is released at any time. Not only the life essence that is released. You release a dynamo power for dominion taking. You know what is life essence? Life essence is the thing that makes life to be life. Human life to be life. For instance, if someone does not have a life essence, he's existing as a demon. The power that is called the energy, the supersonic powerful energy that makes life, human life, life on earth, is released whenever. That's why a child is born. That's why a child is born. If not, you will just have children without breath, without anything. Life essence is released. That's why you will see the whole character of the man is not only a biological thing. You take that life, the moment the two jump together like this and they renew that covenant, the life is squeezed into that child. The life essence is squeezed. That's why the child will be born and is not going to be an animal. The thing that makes human beings human is released every single moment people get involved in a sexual intercourse so can you imagine such a powerful energy that you drop every minute you have sex the power to take dominion the power to subdue the power to make life what it is on earth is all of these are released whenever you indulge in a sexual activity that's why god said let it be done only within a, cons a legally consummated union so that when you release that power your partner it is released onto your partner who is going to hold it for you because she's already under oath with you when you release to your man your man is going to hold it so that anytime any one of you will need this essence again any of this power you will dig into the pool and take it back from your partner. She will willingly release and nourish you with it. And your man will also nourish you with the power. So you sharpen one another. Iron sharpeneth iron. So you see the power. The creative power of God. The creative ability of God. That he left with mankind. Is released every time. We ejaculate. Or we get involved in sexual activity. If it is that powerful, do you think the devil is going to fold his arms and keep quiet? Can you imagine the amount of energy you throw away? That's why Anton LaVey, the man who founded the church of Satan, you know what he said? He said, I know the devil always knows how to lie. That's why if you have not read the Bible well, if you don't understand God, if you don't have enough revelation, there's no way you're going you're gonna to watch some of these research materials and not get deceived. 
So I always know more before I go to see them. I know when they are lying and when they are telling the truth. Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, told these people that when you, when, you, when, when you masturbate looking at a woman, that you're giving your energy to that woman. But it is not true. The woman is only used as, as a bait to extract the energy. You are giving it to a demon. I want to prove to you today that every time you masturbate, that you are producing demons in hell. Let me prove it to you, please. Today is a fantastic night. So, there is something they call the humanoids. All this kind of, you know, the, the Bible tells us about the war of Armageddon. The Bible tells us about how that the enemy is planning to come and wage war against God. And he's going to be here on earth. And if the devil is going to fight God on earth, you think he's going to use spiritual body to fight God? No, they're going to use human body. They're going to use physical human body. So sometime in 19... Was it 1951 or so? No, 19 something something. It is a place in America, in, Las, in, in Nevada. It's called Area 51. You can write it down so that you can Google it. I think that was the first place ever in America that the alien ship fell down the alien jet the flight you know these ufos that was the first place that their flight fell and crashed and they were able to capture real life aliens right and the people normally call it conspiracy theory but it's not conspiracy theory i've been able to confirm it the aliens actually went to make a pact with the american leaders at that time to make an agreement with them that hey if you guys can give us human beings to experiment with we are, and they, he, they were, they, they, uh, there's one particular alien, his name was Val. He had about six fingers and six toes, and, and they don't have normal skin. They're just like, you know, like when you see Amoeba or something. They just, I, I saw the picture of Val. I've seen the picture, but I haven't seen him move. But I've seen the picture. So they came, they have a lot of diseases. They speak hundreds of languages and all of that. So they were speaking by, with, through an interpreter, an electronic interpreter. And they were telling the Americans, allow us to have human beings for experimentation and then we will teach you technology and teach you sciences and give you some knowledge you've never had before so they gave americans knowledge about stealth aircraft how to make jet fighters and all of that and americans allowed them to abduct human beings that's where the whole story of alien abduction began from where people where they you start hearing if you can you can google it just google alien abduction aliens have been abducting women in america for years now they take them and they disappear and go out of that outer space and they go and they embed and put children inside them and the women will come on earth and give birth to children that's how you go to know about indigo babies and all these humanoid and funny crazy kind of children that are all over the place today and are constituting a huge army against god so that's just a little background but let me explain to you the aliens who are supposed to come here on earth to fight against god they need human body demons do not have the power to procreate they cannot have sex and create themselves. They only mutate. They mutate. They split. They have split personalities. They have they, they, their, their body. They just mutate. They break into different parts. They can change themselves and move into different all kinds of parts. But when it come and they can only function as demons. So the only two ways that they can come to function on earth is what I'm about to reveal to you today. The first way demons operate on earth is that demons will have to do what I just told you now on how they use sexual intercourse and masturbation to eject your spirit and arrest your spirit and replace themselves inside your soul with your spirit and your spirit stays in jail. That's why when you see people when they are praying a prayer of deliverance, oh Lord, deliver my soul from hell, from the pit of hell. Your, 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 oh sorry, deliver my spirit. Your spirit is arrested and then another spirit is inside of you living. This is how the demons come. So that demon takes over your being. The second other way they come to earth in a human body to manifest in physical body is when you give them the life essence during masturbation. I know you've never heard this anywhere in life. Whenever you masturbate, I'll prove you. Whenever you masturbate, all that energy, all that creative energy, genius creative genius and the creative ability the creative power of god that i told you you release whenever you go into sexual intercourse 
that creative ability of God is taken away. And what the demons do, they let your sperm like ordinary water drop on the ground. Then they suck up that energy. They pick it and send it and use it to mold humanoids that will eventually come to this earth and be able to have a body. So the demons that are going to walk in our midst, that are already even walking, if you go to UK, they will tell you there are demons that are walking physically on earth today like human beings. There are so many of them that are still underground in some underground bases that they don't want to reveal to you. I don't want to go deep into all that research. I will prove to you there are so many demons that are having human body on earth. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands, if not millions, waiting for the day they are going to war with God. And they don't want to reveal them to you. That's why Facebook today recognizes 71 genders. You and I know that there are only two genders on earth. Facebook recognizes, Facebook users in UK, they recognize 71 new genders. American Facebook users recognize 50 genders, different genders. One of the genders is called two spirits. The other one is called gender fluid. All of them are spirits. And they have been recognized because they are not part of the human system. Who gave them the essence to create? Because the devil does not have power, not have power to create any human being. Who gave them the ingredients to create these demonic, human-looking demons? It is you whenever you masturbated. Do you want further proof? Do you know how many pornographic websites we have on earth today? I'm going to do a special program on pornography. Do you know how many pornographic websites we have? We have hundreds of thousands of pornographic websites thousands littered everywhere and do you i am a filmmaker i'm a movie producer i've gotten all the way to hollywood i've done everything i know how expensive it is to make a movie no matter how small it is do you know have you asked yourself why is it that there are so many pornographic movies high quality ones some of them one hour two hours freshly made not old new they are all as easily accessible online free of charge free you just want free why is it that hollywood today is 99.99 percent sold out to sex selling sex sexual immorality why is it that the music industry is sold out to sex why is it that the movie industry is sold out to sex just to stimulate you they spend millions of dollars billions of dollars just to make sure that they arouse you do you know how many billion dollar industry the pornographic industry is today tell me what is their aim do you think they're trying to help anybody they are only trying to arouse you so that you can enter into the spirit of fornication uh, masturbation and the moment you, because you know why the devil has so many demons they want to send into the earth the only hope they have of getting these humanoids and getting all these demons is by getting human beings to donate their life essence to them so they can use the life essence donated freely by you so they can use it to create humanoids and send them to the earth to come and be a terror to you again. If you think you've heard this from anywhere, please indicate from the <laughs> comment page. Have you heard it anywhere before? This is what happens. That's why pornography is everywhere. Have you heard the word? They say sex sells. They use sex to sell everything. Come to Nigeria. Whiskey, the video, every one of them. You can't watch a single music video that is not about soliciting sex. Someone is naked, shaking big bombo. If he's not shaking bombo, you're not going to sell your music. You ask yourself, just take one minute. Why are they spending all this money? And do you know what? How many endorsements have you ever seen Frank Edwards receive or uh, 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 Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel Bassi or any one of these guys? Who are the people receiving all the endorsements? It is Davido, it is uh, uh, Whiskey, it is uh, uh, Olamide, Fino. What do they do? They are marketing sex. And when they market sex because they sell it to you through the screen, you don't go to go and collect the person that is sh shaking a bumbo. You just sit down and you help yourself. Everything boils down to making sure that you masturbate. 
the reason you have spirit wife and spirit husband is that the moment a male spirit has re a spirit sorry a spirit has replaced the one that you have after they arrest your spirit and the spirit enters into your soul that spirit is going to have is going to make you to sleep with another female one that is the one they call your spirit wife you end up sleeping with it so whenever you're masturbating the one that is supposed to be the female representative receive your energy and then the one that is also female that is dropping her own. so a man is do donating his male life in essence and er creative energy the woman is donating and these wicked forces are collecting from all over the world and they are using it to mold demons that are called the humanoids which they push into the earth and they are here with us already just do a little research and you'll find out what i'm talking about they are with us already on earth, everywhere on earth. In masturbation, you are helping to create the demons that will become a major army against the Most High God. You donate your life essence. You donate. That's why every time you give that life essence, even psychologically speaking, you are messed up because you are used as vegetable. You are used as a guinea pig. They just take you and take over your body, inhabit your body, and they pull all these things. The strain goes out of you because you are not a prisoner. Okay, thank God we are back. Praise God. So, every time they take that life essence out of you, you become very weak. You become very weak. In your mind, you're messed up. Everything is drained. You don't know yourself again. You find out that you have, you have, this has happened to so many people I know. You have a plan. You want to go to do a business deal. And suddenly, you have signed, you've signed everything. They said, okay, we're going to pay the money to your account. The day you're supposed to go and sign the final signature to get your money. That night before, for some reason, something that you haven't done in a long while, that demon will come again and you must masturbate. Why must it happen? That's it. And the moment you finish, you go over there. You know who they are seeing? They are seeing a different person altogether, not even you. All the phone calls you're supposed to get, all of them disappear. You know why? Because now a new personality has taken over your personality. Let me explain that angle to you now. So, I told you about what happens when Ike Natanuzama said that when a spirit takes over you, that spirit that takes over you becomes you. So, every time a man in life a woman is imbued with a spirit for instance now i receive the spirit of god let me explain to you something that you would take for life as a human being where you are right now your name is in 1001 places on earth people are carrying the memory of you people carry image of you people carry the thought of you everybody who carries the thought of you or memory of you or whatever they carry your image there so it's like a computer soft software the moment you receive a spirit of god that image that people have of you the spirit of god will reflect on all those images in their lives that's why sometimes when you make some very important spiritual decision in your life and you start doing the right thing people who refuse to call you who have never remembered you suddenly will remember you and start calling you again immediately because there is a rebooting a, and it's just like somebody saying i changed my profile picture all the people on earth that have access to facebook will see that my face profile picture is changed so all the system that carry facebook on them everybody no matter how small your system, your device is if you have facebook there you must see my profile picture there and based on that profile picture you will decide should i get in touch with him should i not so in everybody's mind where your mind where your, the thought of you has gone the moment you receive the spirit of god it is it reflects on all those places where your name is mentioned or where your memory or the thought of you resides the same thing happens when you take on a demonic spirit even people who loved you before suddenly they will check their device which is their heart or their brain and they think of you and all they see is a demon someone i shouldn't deal with oh this guy is silly this guy is weak oh this guy is dangerous somebody who trusted you all of a sudden they're announcing that you're too dangerous because a spirit has replaced you and that spirit now has become you that spirit after becoming you it reflects on everybody who knows you all the contracts you sign all the projects you are supposed to do all of them will begin to see that they are dealing with a, a demon somebody they, they don't like and before you know it everything will start crumbling this is why even if you have to whatever you can do on earth 
do it to make sure that the spirit of God remains in you. So now let me tell you, in closing, you're asking me right now, uh, okay, Brother Joe, this is really scary. This is really dangerous. Oh, my goodness. So this is what happens. So what do I do? Can I tell you people something that will shock you today? Somebody's asking, how did you get your deliverance? If I told you how I got my deliverance, you will not believe it. Do you know my deliverance started by me just knowing what masturbation is? The moment I realized what happens when I masturbate, I stood my ground. I said, it, it, it was almost as if I was saying, God, even if you don't help me with this one, I'm going to fight and set myself free. I cannot continue to be in one place because the moment they use you to receive that life essence, you become like a chicken that is laying egg. When a chicken, a layer is laying egg, please be honest with me. Do you let it move in, to be moving up and down? They put them in a cage and they just produce only eggs. They give you little crumbs. You feed you with their feed. You eat. They give you, you eat. This is what happens when you masturbate because you are laying eggs for the demons. So they won't let you go beyond to reach your aim in life. They will never reach, allow you to get behind, get beyond the life. They will never allow you to get ahead. They will let you to prosper because they want to have full access to you. They need it. When you see a, a hen that has laid too much egg to the point that the hen is almost finished. That's the one that they kill and they kill it and go and sell it. And when you are even eating the chicken, it doesn't taste like chicken. Because every essence that is in that chicken has gone. It has been laying egg for the past only God knows how many years. This is what they are doing. They are draining and sucking out the life essence from you when you masturbate. Masturbation is 150,000% spiritual. Don't buy the lies that, hey, I want to release stress. You become far more stressful. Even doctors have agreed. Far more stressed up when you masturbate. Far more stressed up when you masturbate. So, if you don't masturbate, if you don't engage in all this unnecessary sexual activity, you are storing the creative energy that God gave you inside. That's why you become powerful. Did you notice that some people, when they make a decision, I'm not going to sleep around again, suddenly they notice that they are becoming too powerful. Boldness will come. A lot of confidence will jump into you. Because the creative essence, the power to create is released whenever you indulge in a sexual activity. That's why you need to embark on a spiritual journey before you can release a sperm or release the egg. This revelation is your cake, so, to, so you better eat a huge chunk of it today. I couldn't keep this to myself. Now that you know, can I tell you something, especially for those of us who are in the August warfare, uh, sorry, in the celibacy program. Let me tell you something today. From today, make a decision you must create the atmosphere for your deliverance and your miracle. How do you do that? Beginning and the end of it is what? Worship songs, music. God in heaven, as long as the Lord remains and as long as he provides strength to me, I am going to definitely do a program about music and the power of music. And I will show you why musicians are the highest paid artists on earth today. The witches cannot do anything without music. The devil is so handicapped without music. A music that is playing in your arena right now can change your entire body system. And something you said you will never do again, you immediately do it without even knowing. Music is the only phenomenon known to mankind that enters into your subconscious and controls you without even your own permission. Somebody was talking and he said, music 
was created because of worship. Is he lying? Music is, was made for worship. Can you imagine that God has angels in heaven and the only job the angels do from morning till night, although they don't have night in heaven, but all through the time, the only thing the angels do is to do what? Is to sing and praise and worship. Your body was wired. I'm going to do it. The day I'm going to do this, I will prove to you. Your body is wired to respond to musical tunes. Your body. The plants. Everything. At the point I was thinking maybe there was music playing when God was created because animals respond to music. The plants that you plant respond to music. I'm talking about vegetations. Plants respond to music. I will prove it to you when I do a program on music. Everything in creation responds to music, especially you. So what you do now, make sure you embrace worship songs. Change the atmosphere in your house. Turn off MTV. Turn off Sound City if you're in Nigeria. Turn off all this nonsense. Let powerful, let the atmosphere be permeated with powerful hardcore worship. I told you people before, I mean it, I'm not joking. Me, I don't do follow my word, don't follow my action. No, I like people to come. I prefer that you even follow my action more than my words. Because I do everything I say to you. I don't, I don't do two face. No, I do. If you enter my house, if you are not believe, if you don't get born again, then nobody will make you born without even preaching to you. You must reflect Christ. When you have created that atmosphere that you're going to use powerful worship songs to create, even as you're going to work, if you have earpiece, let download powerful songs to your device. Don't listen to any Olamide or any uh, Kanye West or Jay Z. Stop giving your energy to these people. Store it and use it to change your environment. Plug it in your ear. Plug it everywhere. When my car stereo spoiled, I drove my car for, the, for six months. One of my cars. That particular car. Maybe because it wasn't the big, big one. So I just, I drove it for almost six months without listening to anything inside because the stereo spoiled. Because if the stereo is there, I listen to what I want to listen. But if it is radio, radio, almost every radio is talking nonsense. So I, I, I shut down the radio completely. You can't listen to nonsense in my house. I say, I, I mean, you can't listen to rubbish in my house. No matter where you find me. When you have created this atmosphere and change what goes into your head because you know the demons that they put inside you that has now become you the only way they sustain the demon is by supplying the demon with satanic songs that's why you love those songs it's not that you really love them it is the thing that lives inside of you that loves the things that you're listening to the moment you still have because now the only hope you have now is that the real the will power that made god do what he did in creation you still have it up to tomorrow the devil doesn't want you know to, to know that you have it but you have it even as i'm talking to you right now even if you're already buried into masturbation you still have that will power the only thing that will happen now is that you can use that will power and say oh lord save your son i am sorry you will go to god and say father please deliver me you can still return your soul from hell because the moment your body dies here on earth that soul has perished your spirit is in jail now because you still have life you can use your willpower as a living being to call back your spirit but if the devil kills you you remain in hell forever that's why sometimes when the devil takes people's soul he doesn't want them to have the opportunity to give their life to Christ. he kills them immediately because the moment he kills them they won't have the opportunity to return their spirit from jail again Our God is faithful. Enter into music. Powerful worship songs. A song that will make you cry, weep. You fall down on the ground, you're crying. You're weeping out your head. Songs that make you shake. For me, I quake when I worship. I quake, you see me, I'll do like this. It happens to me a lot. I quake like there's no tomorrow. I lose my mind. We have Nathaniel Bassey. We have brush. There are power. You have all the, even the songs I'm writing for you. The songs I play for you here every day. There's so many of them. I, when I travel, when I'm in Nigeria and I'm driving and traveling, I love to listen to Frank Edwards a lot. I have so many other foreign ones. You have all these Toby, you have all these... Uh, there's so many of them. 
You even know them more than me. Maybe we're going to have to make up a list and supply to you people. Load your iPod and your, your, your devices with powerful worship songs. Make it a law, a point of duty. You should not listen to anything that is not from God. From that moment, you start starving that spirit. And instantly, you can eject the spirit and say, God, save my soul. And your spirit will return to you. When your spirit returns back to you, you give him straight to God again. That's, that means you have now rededicated your life to Christ. And as soon as your spirit goes back to God, God now wins the right again to replace your spirit with his own spirit. And suddenly, it will no longer be you living the Christ living in you all over again. And then masturbation is gone. The grounds will not be there. And you sustain it. If you don't want it to come back, you sustain it by maintaining your spiritual principles. You read the scriptures. You listen to music that will lift you up every day. You won't even know when masturbation disappeared in your life. No amount of deliverance can take you away from masturbation if you do not adopt the principles of heaven, of the kingdom. That's the easiest way. So you can stop creating children, demons. For the satanic kingdom i can only believe and hope that you have gotten something today <laughs> i can't believe you have gotten something today there's one scripture i'm going to read for you and then we close i just wanted to use that scripture to prove to you what i said earlier um the bible said defraud ye not one another first corinthians chapter 7 verse 5 1 Corinthians 7 5. He said, Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. For those of you who might be wondering, ah, why did he say that Holy Ghost cannot be there when we're having sex or when I'm this is it? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. When I received the revelation, I was telling God, God, what are you telling me? What is so the Holy Ghost will have to leave? He said, That is why he said, except for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. He said, just that time you can stay away from this thing, just leave it for the minute. When you people finish, eh, come back again so that you do not fall into temptation. Our God is awesome. I strongly believe. That this has been a worthwhile birthday gift from me to you, even though it's my own birthday. That I've shared my cake with you. And I'm going to keep you in my prayers. And keep praying that God Almighty will set you free. Brothers and sisters, let's share this video. Let us stop producing children for demons. Anybody that tells you anything else, please put them in touch with me. Let me do deliverance on them. This is the origin and the genesis and the whole revelation of masturbation. That's why they spend so much money, billions, to get you to masturbate. You see Beyonce, she's shaking like this. You see all these sexual innuendos on, radio, on TV. Turn on your TV today. Everything you turn, even on the news channel, everywhere, sex, sex, sex. What are they doing? For people who start, just started masturbating, any little thing that they see, bam, you pick up a magazine, there's a sexual thing there, bam, they, they can even masturbate even on the road while they're walking. That's why they're spending billions and trillions to make sure that they sexualize our society so that people can just give out the energy from everywhere. They're even going to children now. They're destroying the innocence of our children. The energy becomes even more potent, more powerful. And they take it, harvest it. That is a harvest. They harvest us, they harvest it, and they create the same weapon that they're going to use to destroy us. Enough is enough. Now that you know, fight, fight. Fight and see that this thing does not repeat again. You have all it takes. You have the willpower. You have Christ by your side. You have God waiting to receive you back. Everything you have life. Receive, take your spirit back from the Satan's prison and be free once and for all. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ancient of days, every man, woman listening to me now that has labored under the weight of masturbation, Father, by the power in the name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, I command the whole to break in the name of Jesus. Break! In the name of Jesus. I say break. In the name of Jesus. Right now. 
You wicked spirit, you thief. You thief. You thief. Your end is now. Your end is now. No more, I said. No more in the name of Jesus. Lose them now and let them go. Lose their spirit and let them go now in the name of Jesus. They have accepted to serve the Lord. They have rejected you. I'm in agreement with my brothers and sisters. I'm in agreement with them. That you will no longer take dominion. Their power to take charge. Their dominion power. Return it to them right now. Return to them right now. Their dominion power. Return to them their power to subdue. You will not do to them what you did to Samson. Now. In the name of Jesus. Return all the life essence back to them. Father, restore your people. They may be as empty as a chaff right now, but God, you restore them, restore them, restore your people again. Restore them by the power in the name of Jesus. Hey, I plead the blood of Jesus upon your children, oh God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost shatter every wall of immorality and let God be praised in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious God. Thank you, ancient of days. Let your name be glorified. Come and have your way, Daddy. That after this program, this night, not one single person listening or watching will ever labor again under the satanic bondage of masturbation. Not one person. I enter this covenant with you today, Lord. Not one person after this night. Holy Spirit, go around, touch every person. Go to where their spirits are hidden in Satan's jail. Please restore back every satanic thing that has occurred in their life. Please let it stop. Everything that they have lost, their money, their contacts, their connections, their wealth, everything, let it come back right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your name, ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, guys. <laughs> I think it's been a night. Uh, I, I just wanted to share this with you, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being uh, a part of this. And for those of you who uh, have sent wishes, birthday wishes, again, I want to say thank you. You know I love you. You know that it's not, it's not even negotiable. You can't even dispute that. I, I, I love you like helplessly, you know, and I prove it to you all the time, you know. So uh, just, just take my little uh, appreciation and gratitude. I, I thank you so much. God bless you guys. You know, it's the greatest gift you can ever give. And I saw the way some of you were pouring out your heart. We are writing your birthday, which is just amazing. I was just reading through the much that I could read. So I want to thank you. God bless you. And for those of you also who have supported our move, remember, I told you people, um, for those of you who have been following me since last year, you know that I've never, and I, I make bold to say, it, I've never really ever, ever uh, solicited for anything while I'm doing my program because God has blessed me and I have the little that I have I, I share with people I don't care I don't ask I don't know how to ask for things and until when God told me about this Osuka system which I'm doing that was when I realized you know listen you can't do this all by yourself it's extremely capital intensive I mean as I'm talking to you right now we have almost about three to four scheduled trips I have a team of about maybe five or six and they're still growing and we're all going to be flying. We have a lot of consultation to make because this thing is going to, God told me he wants Osuka system to be stamped out of the East 
before the end of this year and we want to have that done we're going to have our prayer program done so if you know you have any little bit to spare in terms of finances please try to help us out i i tell you i can't do it alone i'm telling you the truth that there's no hiding this one i mean if it is just our usual celibacy your gospel and i can handle that it's not a problem but this one i need you guys so please find time to help us to get this thing done we it's not just only finances so we still need even connections contacts from people we need to talk to god has been so faithful we've spoken to so many kings and all of them are excited it's amazing what god is doing i'm not going to reveal names and locations or timelines and everything but you will see that before six months time i'm going to come back to let you guys know that we have a scheduled date our program and we're going to go to Ibo land and repent and apologize to our brothers and sisters who have been wrongly labeled apologize to god as well and the lord will give us a nation i'm telling you this is going to happen everything i tell you always comes to pass right it's not me i'm not the one doing it i just tell you the truth and i don't like to hide it you know so god bless you thank you so much i love you how else can i say this i love you thank you and god bless you i gotta go now <laughs> Bye-bye.